Are you someone with a filthy mind? Meaning it's cluttered with all the uh, flotsam and jetsam of life, the uh, anxiety, the stress, the problems that a mind can get filled with. Is it cluttered? Does it need a good sweeping? Sweep the leg. Well, you're in luck because today I'm going to talk about brooms. That got your attention, didn't it? I know, I know. You're probably thinking, how can she fill possibly 10 minutes with broom talk? Well, don't worry. I'm sure it's going to be a total clean sweep of your heart. <laughs> Whew, it's getting hot in here. Oh, nah, it's just broom temperature. <laughs> oh my God. I know you're excited. We are gathered here today to talk about the post, the uh, Broom Squire's Compendium to Mind and Body Besom. Besom being the fancy word for broom. I really hoped when I looked up the pronunciation of besom that it was besson, like French or something, but it's not. It's just bog standard besom. Ugh, boring. But a besom, before we get into this, that's like your traditional, how they used to make a broom with like the, the wooden stick. Well, I mean, they still have wooden sticks, but it would be like the, uh, the twigs and the heather and the silver birch and the, you know, just the bushy end of the the broom. I believe I just my broom. That, that's a traditional, like a witch would ride. The more you know, the dumber you feel. Today we're getting educated and you cannot stop me from educating. I was born to be a teacher. I was born. The subtitle to the post was An Incomplete Guide to Mind Sweeping. If you didn't get a chance to read the post, brief summary, it was essentially a compendium of the classifications of brooms that you could have to clean out your mind, a little mind sweeping. If, you, if you're a person who makes uh, the mind sweeping brooms, you're a very high level professional, a craftsman. I'm a professional. Or artisan, if you like. And if you didn't read it, I'm not offended. This should still make sense. But uh, if you want to read it, it's, uh, it's down below. So these were essentially brooms for the mind. You get the idea. And there were six classifications, which we will get into shortly. But first, you're probably wondering, well, how did she get the idea to write six classifications of brooms that don't exist for the mind? I'll tell ye. You're familiar with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, I assume? NASA? Not rogue NASA, this is rogue NASA. But you get it, NASA, the worm, space exploration, shuttles, fake moon landings, that kind of thing. Fake a moon landing. So I read this little story about back in the day, we're talking back in Apollo era, uh, NASA didn't have a reliable method by which to detect hydrogen gas leaks around the launch pad area and any areas associated with hydrogen, I guess. This was a problem. See, I don't know if you know this, but to make rocket fuel, she said confidently as though she knows what she's talking about, you need to mix hydrogen with oxygen in liquid form. And uh, I guess magic happens. Uh, you can Someone taps it with a wand and uh, you get combustion and the rocket takes off into the black and inky heavens to go um, look for asteroids to mine and, you know, creatures with googly eyes and um, all that kind of space junk. You know? My weight is appropriate and attractive. Now, hydrogen, she says, carrying on the charade, still pretending to know what she's talking about. Hydrogen in gas form is highly combustible. But Janine, you just said it was in liquid form. Yes, but should it perhaps by chance tragically, catastrophically evaporate back into gas form somewhere during the process, maybe during refueling or something like that, and there's a leak, well, there's a uh, potential for some bad shit going down, as they say. Because here comes my third attempt at looking smart. The problem with hydrogen in gas form, she says, pushing up glasses, is... Hydrogen gives off a low radiant heat, meaning its flame, if it's on fire, is invisible in the daylight. Much like my career. Well, that was awkward. Yes, it was. So, the boffins at NASA, the folks with the big brains on them, they came up with this smart idea called the broom solution. 
You're on the edge of your seat, I can tell. I mean, I'm on the edge of this cushion. Imagine, if you will, a scientist or an engineer from NASA walking around the launch pad or the facility holding a long-handled broom out in front of them. Are you imagining it? Okay. Now imagine the end of that broom as they're waving it around like some kind of water diviner in a uh, Cape Canaveral environment or wherever they were. Now imagine the head of the, uh, the broom touches the invisible hydrogen flame and surprisingly and suddenly bursts into flame. There's your leak, folks, right there where that broom is on fire. Genius. Problem solved. I'm happy to say they have a new method of uh, detecting hydrogen leaks. Basically, there's a special hydrogen tape, from what I understand, that changes colour if there's a leak in the pipe or wherever. Here's a photo of a NASA person demonstrating a broom catching on fire. I'm a fire starter, twisted fire starter. Shut up and get to the point! All I know is I read that and I'm like, there's an idea. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet, but that's going to be something. Sometimes these things are just swept right in front of you. Mm. I love fancy names for professions, right? So you got your Wainwright for making wagons or a horologist for making watches and clocks. Luthier. 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 Luthier? Luthier? The folks that make guitars and lutes and mandolins. And I got out the old Google machine and tippity type, I typed in, Dear Google, what do you call someone who makes brooms? What do you call someone who makes a broom? A broom squire. Jealous. Broom squire. Do you think they have dapper little hats? Probably got suspenders. Well, hello. I make brooms. And that's when it came to me. A special subset of broom squirey where the broom squires make brooms or bisms for the mind. You'll see how the NASA part comes back into it in a minute. So let's get into the classifications of the actual brooms that uh, the broom squires would learn. Six classifications were... Sweepers, swingers, rulers, detectors, DJFs, and flyers. First, you had your basic classification of sweepers. This is the most general and most commonly available type of mind sweeper that you could get. This would be for like the everyday clearing out of uh, mind detritus and, uh, you know, dust, dirt tracked in from bad experiences. Sweepers are used for like just sweeping out large rooms, gathering a pile of the dirt and dust in the center of the mind room, and then being able to sift through and pull out all the useful stuff like buttons and lost keys, stuff like that and then sweep the, uh, the rest of the pile into a pan, which coincidentally would be crafted by a pan squire, which is a profession I just made up. It's a total fabrication. I did also have a caution for broom squires learning this craft. If you had an apprentice or just a trainee broom squire attempt to make a sweeper, sometimes their inexperience would add an element of uh, avoidance to the creation of the sweeper. So the sweeper would sometimes force the uh, operator to sweep the things in their mind rather than into the center of the room under a rug. It's why most apprentice or first year broom squires are encouraged to start with maybe a DJF, which we'll get to in a minute. The second classification of besom or broom are called swingers. Side note, I live in a beach town and uh, when you walk around the neighborhoods here, a lot of houses or cottages have like a yellow starfish, like attached near the door or somewhere on the front of the house. And I went to a street party recently and I was like, we were talking about, you know, what's the deal with all the starfish? Someone jokingly said, at least I think it was a joke, uh, it means that it's a swinger house. You know what, maybe this isn't such a good idea. <laughs> if that is true, then I am surrounded by people who throw keys in bowls at parties and see what happens. Who knows if that's true? Is it just a sale that um, seaside towns are us or something? Or? Just throw your keys in the bowl. But I'm off track there. The swinger I'm talking about here is a type of besom, a broom. You know when you have like a niggling thing in the back of your mind or an anxiety or a fear, it's like kind of out of reach, you don't really know how to deal with it? That's what you need a swinger for. Now the broom squire, when creating a 
swinger would have to know things like lightweight materials, probably something about physics, like with head weight, with knowing like how to get the balance right, getting up there at those cobwebs. There is a cobweb up there, but that's not my mind. This is my apartment. Get that later. The vacuum cleaner. I don't have a broom. I need a professional broom squire to pop by and take care of that. I also made a note that a good quality swinger if you've got mind carpets that are like filled with just years of tracked in wear and thought and you could throw your mind carpet on the line and get the old swinger and bash at it and would cause like maybe ideas to come up a lot of dust and then you could like use your sweeper to sweep up and gather things out of it if you wanted that's the way i see it the third classification rulers you use rulers to judge risk so when your broom squire makes rulers the handle would be notched in a scale one end risk would be eh not too bad the other end would be fuck sake abort <laughs> So that's what you would use that kind of broom for, the rulers. The fourth kind, detectors classification. Like if your brain is on fire, but it's invisible. People can't see that you're suffering with some kind of mental malady. And your brain is on fire from it. Maybe you're a bit manic whatever. A detector would help you to identify the leak in your brain, the leak of confidence, the leak of self-esteem, etc. And then you could work out how to deal with that. Detectors, very important classification of besom. So that one was obviously inspired by NASA. I'm a fire starter. Thank you for your service, nerds. Now, up until this point, the four classifications of broom have been quite serious. And that's when you get to the DJFs, classification five, which actually encompasses three different kinds of brooms or besoms. The D, standing for dancers, the J, standing for jumpers, and the F, standing for farters. These are like the, they bring the joy back to your brain. Dancers. If you have a dancer besom, it's the one you dance with, make eye contact, that's self-love. I imagine if you're a broom squire that makes um, dances, probably quite emotional, probably quite centred, spiritual maybe. Also within the DJFs were the jumpers. What's that game you play when you've maybe had a few to drink? You hold the broom up, you look up and you spin around and then you throw the broom down and try to jump over it. That's what uh, mind jumpers are for. It's like getting yourself dizzy in your brain and just experience the euphoria and joy of the moment with a jumper. Now, farters, this is not a sound the broom makes, although that can be uh, programmed in if you get the upgrade. Does not come stock, nor does farter describe the actual operator. They're not farting either. Farters are brooms that are used for farting about. So whether you're using your uh, farter to reenact the Princess Bride top a cliff sword fight you see my distant fellow. I hate to kill you. or doing some mind limbo, that's what you use a farter for. That's a great category. A lot of first year broom squires would start with that category. They're the kind of blinged out besoms that you would get. Psychedelic kind of stuff. Speaking of psychedelics. How to read. <laughs> The five levels of consciousness. The final classification of besom in the uh, broom squirey compendium would be flyers. These are obviously the brooms that your mind and imagination takes flight upon. Very special. Besom. Similar to, you know, what you would imagine a, a witch would use. Things are about to take a turn. I'm just warning you. I don't think I made a mistake in doing this, but I happen to think, now why in folklore, in the stories, do witches ride brooms? And what I learned was uh, eye-opening. She turned me into a newt. I don't know if you've ever Googled it, and I'm not going to get into it, except to say, let's say there's like a kind of psychedelic balm of some sort, maybe a paste. And let's also say that you have a broom. I was gonna get up and find the broom. And for some reason, I don't know why, you apply this psychedelic balm to the handle, I'm gonna be careful with my hand symbols here, to the handle of the broomstick. 
This looks so real. I can't even see the buttons on it. Now let's just say that the handle of this broom with the psychedelic balm slathered upon it. Let's just say that were to make contact with the naked uh, swimsuit area of a lady back in the day. And let me explain. Let me explain. I don't know. Maybe she has some kind of psychedelic experience because of this that flies away with her mind. Or something. I mean, hypothetically, I don't, I don't know if I understood it correctly. And I don't like to make sweeping generalizations, but I'm pretty sure there's easier ways to do that. Anyway, that was this week's post. NASA and their burning broom heads and broom squires. Well, hello, I make brooms and witches. And now you are feeling very sweepy. Sorry. It's all going so well until I made that mess. Have to call in broom service. <laughs> clean it up. Sorry again. It's like I fell down on a hole and now I'm going to have to like climb out and brush myself off. Start again. Except I won't start again because this is the end and I will see you next week.